What's up guys? Where's Lacey here? So maybe you've been filming a little while now and you've decided it's time to step it up a notch and improve the audio, changing it from that onboard mic to something a little bit better. Well, unless you're one of those super lucky people that can afford to go out and buy whatever they want, then selecting a decent mic can actually be a little bit of a minefield. In this video, I'm gonna compare a super budget lavalier microphone that clips onto here with the much more pricey but still relatively cheap Video Mic Pro Plus. And I'm gonna pit those two against the onboard mic. So you're gonna be able to hear those three different sounds and you're gonna be able to make your own mind up and weigh up that cost. So let's get going. First off guys, thank you so much for stopping by. It's great to see all your faces, both new and old. I hope you're doing great and you're looking forward to the festive season to spend some time with your family and I hope you enjoy this video. If at any point you feel like I've earned it, make sure you hit the like button. The more likes, shares, comments and general interactions with the video, the more YouTube will recommend it to others. Okay, so today we're gonna be looking at two different microphones. We've got on one hand the really budget Boyer BY-M1 lavalier microphone and on the other side we've got the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus. But I already know what some of you out there might say. How can you compare a lavalier versus a shotgun microphone? Well this video is not about the different types of microphone, it's about the difference in sound quality for those people that are just starting out and want to improve that sound. So starting off, we've got the Boyer mic, which can be purchased on Amazon for around 14, 15 quid English pounds. And then we've got the Video Mic Pro, which costs between 230 and 270 I've found on Amazon. So why am I making this video? One, it's cool to see. So we're gonna be comparing cheap versus inexpensive. Also, it might actually save you a little bit of money because when you see another video and everybody's got this certain microphone or everybody's got this certain camera, straight away we just go, that must be a good camera and we jump to it. Now, are we right to just jump straight into this uh, mic? Is it popular for a reason? Well, today we're gonna find out. So I'm just gonna look at some similarities and differences for the layman, basically. For, for the average Joe who just wants a sort of general idea about these microphones. I'm not an audio specialist and I certainly don't understand all the sort of in-depth knowledge that goes into creating pristine sound versus low quality sound. But I can tell you from my perspective, who goes around making videos, whether one's better than the other, in my opinion of course. But again, you'll hear that for yourselves and you can make your own decisions. So what is the Broad Video Mic Pro Plus? It's got a detachable wire that can connect between your camera and the back of the mic itself. That's ideal because if you want it to be a little bit longer, say if you want your mic over here but still reaching the camera, you can add that. The other thing is wear and tear. Uh, wires, as we all know from chargers, often over time can start showing signs of wear and might need to be replaced. So that is definitely a bonus, however small. We've got a few settings actually built into the road. So we've got plus 20, minus 10, and a zero decibel level. So what that means to me and you is it can basically amplify the sound or it can quieten it down a little bit or you can keep it as zero. That's important for a few different reasons. So basically, your camera's got a built-in microphone and mine, along with a few others I've seen, have got like an adjustable sensitivity level. So you can actually increase or decrease its sensitivity. So what I've found is that when I plug my mics in and I put the camera on the lowest setting, it's still blowing sound out when the mic's on, on zero. So for me, it's actually handy to be able to reduce that to minus 10. And that's what you're listening to right now. Of course, every camera and device that you're gonna use is gonna be slightly different, but, that, but those settings give you that flexibility to actually differentiate the sound that gets taken into your mic for your, for your device. Another thing is it's got suspension. It's quite cool actually. It's sat on top of the camera and it's got these arms that hold it out and dampen any sort of shock, any sort of movement. So you could be walking with it and it's gonna minimize that sound that travels into your microphone, which is obviously good because it's gonna increase the sound quality. It comes with a battery that supposedly lasts 100 hours. It's a lithium ion one, and it's easy to slide in and out without having to dismantle it off your camera or anything else like that. And it's also got a charger built into it so you can actually charge it up whilst inside the body of the mic itself. 
so should you run out of battery it actually accepts double A's too so you could actually use double A batteries in there in an emergency which are obviously a, a lot more readily available if you've not got the means for charging it's got a boost setting that when you turn on actually amplifies that sound that little bit more and it's really good for when you've got the dead cat on top for when you're outside filming it's got auto on and off so as your camera comes on that comes on as your camera goes off that goes off that's good for a couple of reasons I'm quite forgetful I often forget to turn stuff off and if I forgot to turn that off and then come to film the next day and it's empty obviously it's my own fault but it is definitely a handy thing to have got in it's hands-free I'm not holding it okay I've not got it attached to me so I can do a little bit of moving around which is obviously really good uh, I prefer that myself and the build quality is amazing I was actually watching the long way up recently uh, with Ewan McGregor and Charlie Borman and I noticed that they all had this mic and they're obviously out in the sticks you know roughing it and everything's getting banged about and moved about and if it's good enough for them it's good enough for me now I've also read some comments on YouTube from people who do supposedly specialize in sound and I've read that it increases bass there's less noise in the background and apparently it's easier to mix in post but again that's beyond me so maybe you might know a little bit more about that now onto the lavalier microphone we've got Boyer BYM1 it comes with a six six meter wire costs 14.99 which is obviously what I've already mentioned which is really good now on it we've got a little switch to turn it between DSLR and smartphone the smartphone will work without it being turned on it will power on itself but with things such as a DSLR it needs to be powered and to power it there's a little watch battery in there I think it's LR44 so this mic you would have placed a few centimeters below where the sounds coming from so your mouth this is an omnidirectional microphone which listens at 360 so it's actually good at picking up sound from all directions whereas the shotgun's directional it's supposedly got low handling noise so obviously that's handy for this microphone because it's going to be attached to clothing which is going to be gently rubbing against your clothes and it's supposedly a good microphone for all round use so smartphones, DSLRs um, or even audio sort of recorders again it comes with the same audio jack that just plugs into your camera now supposedly it's not so good at taking in the highs uh, and it's not so good at lows so it's kind of like a mid-range the build quality is also not quite as good the wire uh, feels quite inflexible it feels like the type of wire that you would get on sort of like cheap headphones that is probably not going to last too long okay so let's get to what you actually came here for the sound test this is what I sound like with the Rode microphone this is what I sound like with the Boyer mic and this is what I sound like with the onboard microphone today's date is November the 30th Today's date is November the 30th. Today's date is November the 30th. All right, guys, so what is the verdict? Right, my personal opinion is I prefer the Rode. Not only did I pay more for it, it makes it feel a little bit like better quality to me, but also I like the fact that I don't have to hold it, it's not stuck to me, there's no tripping over, there's no tangling, and supposedly it's got lots of sort of extras where it's like you can mix it in post and all sorts of stuff like that which obviously if you're going to do if you're a professional you're going to want because you're going to want to be able to make sure that any client who's going to be paying you money that should have got high quality sound especially if you're charging for it the lavalier microphone i think is like a good all-round one so it's stuff like if your mate's on and you want some sound coming to you and the shotgun mic's pointing at you but he's over here it's good for that. If you're doing things like vlogs or just like your sort of general YouTube videos and you're just starting out, I can't see any reason for you not to choose the Boyer mic. Especially if most of what you do is sat down at the camera like this. Okay guys, thank you very much. I know it was just a short video today. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, put that comment in the description down there below. Even if it's just to say hello, remember it all helps me out and it will put my it will put my videos higher up and recommend them to other people. Thank you very much. See you again.